The Loch Ness Monster is using fluoride in your drinking water to keep people from seeing the obvious truth. That is a headline for the game Cardspiracy, a game that plays 4-8 to eight players, takes about 45-60 to 60 minutes, and is for ages 14 and up. In the game Cardspiracy, you'll be playing as a journalist or a blogger or an op-ed writer in attempts to gather followers. You're going to want your specific publication to gain as many followers as possible, and to do so, you'll need to write the right headlines, mess with other people's headlines, and then choose Choose your favorite among the people playing. The game will go through a certain number of rounds, and you're going to then flip over your character, revealing what type of blogger or journalist that you are, and score bonus points for all the headlines that you've previously made. There's a ton of zany and interesting headlines you'll be using throughout the game, and we played this live and interacted with the audience as well, plays quite a few players, and can last as long as you really want it to play. Let's go ahead and take down below. I'll show you what's in the game, how the game is basically going to function, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review for the game, Cardspiracy. It's not enough to make headlines. You also have to go viral with those headlines. And that is the objective in this game. Gathering followers is all that matters. Regardless of if you're going to be attempting to gather them from the people around you, or if you're attempting to gather them as your character, or even just making the more appropriate headlines to make sense in a cardspiracy sort of way. In the game, you're going to be getting who, what, and why cards. And like I previously said, there's the Loch Ness Monster who's using the fluoride in your drinking water to keep people from seeing the obvious truth. I just drew these three from the deck, so I didn't actually set them up in any way, just to show you guys what they look like. Everybody will get two of each of the cards, the whys, the whos, and the whats. Everybody's gonna get three action cards. Everybody's going to get a player character as well as a player reference. And that's pretty much all that is needed from the from the players there. Then you're going to go ahead and shuffle all those decks and set them aside. Put them over here. You should have them all within reach of all the players. And if you don't, go ahead and separate them into two stacks across the board so that players can easily draw from the who, what, and why. Don't separate the actions and don't separate the event cards, but do shuffle them. When you shuffle them, go ahead and make sure that they're in reach of the players who are going to be able to flip them. You can designate a certain flipper if you want. And then set aside the rest of the character cards. And if you're not using any of the special unique variant tokens, then you can set those aside as well. You're going to get a certain number of followers to start the game. And then you're going to begin the game. Players are going to start the round by simply making a headline. You'll be using a who, what, and a why and placing them down for everyone to see. Each of these cards are going to have a different type of uh, property, whether it's a, re a generic card or whether it's a paranormal card or perhaps even a governmental card. The ones with the same categories are typically going to function better with each other and they're going to score you more followers if you can keep them by the time the round ends. Designate a starting player. After you've done that, then go ahead and have everybody read their titles along with everybody else. Once that's been done, you'll take the world event deck, you'll flip it over, and then you're going to read it. There are two types of events. One is an instant, which takes immediate effect, and the other is more of a round effect, which will last the entire round of play and is discarded at the end of the round. They're going to do different things, but this one here says that all Who Conspiracy cards will have the generic category for the rest of the round, which doesn't mean much to you now, but it will in a second. After that, you're going to move on to the next part of the game. Taking actions is what it's all about. You're gonna get a certain number of action cards and you're going to play them in turn order to affect either your board, your hand, or something that involves your opponents. Do you wanna peek at the next two cards in the event deck, discard them or change them in any way? You can do that. How about you can go ahead and redirect an impact of an action card played on you to any other player or dis dis disable the active event card and replace it with the next event card and take a new action from the deck. All these are things you can play on your turn, and each player can take one and play it in turn order. And at the end of the round, play order is going to switch, which means that you're never going to play the action card first every time. Everybody's going to have the opportunity to do so. After you've played your action cards, then you're going to actually go ahead and check to see what everybody's headline is, because headlines change, and they change all the time, in fact. And at the end of this, you might not even have the same headline or anywhere close to the headline that you started with. But that's not the point. 
The point is just simply making a headline and making it go viral. Everybody will read the active headlines provided by all of the players, like just like in, you did at the very beginning of the game or the beginning of the round, and then you're going to go ahead and gather followers based on the number of players. If you're playing with four players, you're gonna get a certain number of followers to give away, and if you're playing with more, you get more followers to give away. So the more players, the more followers you'll have to then give away to somebody else. And you'll choose your favorite headline, whether it be a funny headline or whether it be something that makes sense, Let's go ahead and read one of them here. El Chupacabra is using evil clones that melt when exposed to water to maintain institutional racism. Definitely something that's no good and will definitely gather the headlines. Give every single player uh, your, your followers. One player that you choose will get all of your followers and you'll do that in turn order. And after everybody's received those, then the true scoring begins. In this game, you're gonna score by your headlines. You'll be scoring also by the followers that you just got in the previous turn, but the main way you're gonna score is by making appropriate headlines. And how that works fairly simply is you're going to check and see your categories. So I'll go ahead and move these and I'll give you an example here. These guys here, who, what, and why, are going to score you a certain number of points. And in this specific example, it'll score you six. And why is that? Well, you'll check to see if there's any generics in your set of three cards. If you don't have any generics, then you're going to score one for each card. And if you do, you'll score one for each card that is not a generic. Then you're going to multiply that number by the amount of similar categories, the largest amount. And in this case, I have two paranormal and one corporate. So I'll score two as the multiplier. So it'll be a three point plus a, a time and a times two for the paranormal. And that'll score you six points for this one. If I was looking at the original example I had, I would have a generic, a government and a paranormal, which means I'll only get two points because the generic doesn't count. And then I'm going to multiply it by one because the highest category I have of the same type is simply one, which means this player only got two points in the round while this player ended up getting six. A vastly different score. So do your best to maintain your headline that you placed to begin with because very likely that headline will have a lot of points throughout the game. After everybody is done doing this, then you're going to move on to the next round and players will continue doing this in round order, in player order and switching the players from the first player to the next player and so on and so forth. Up until every player has played the same amount of rounds. They could play one, two, three, or four. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter as long as everyone gets the same number of rounds. And then after that, you'll flip over your character card. And let's see here if I have a little... Oh, this is the character here. Whether it be uh, at the end of the game, you'll get one follower for each corporate and paranormal card you've played. Or perhaps it's going to be something like, ah, you'll get one point for each government and paranormal card. And they all have different types of scoring. So you're going to be going for specific types of cards throughout the game. To note, which is also very important, after you've played your headline, whatever your ending headline is, make sure you set that headline aside for the end of the game for your scoring. After you've tallied up your points from your character card, all of the followers you've received through the following rounds, and the points you've scored each round from your headlines, whoever has the most followers is the winner, of course, because that's what's important when it comes to news media. Angsty teenagers who think they are vampires are using telepathy to melt steel beams or sexy nurses are using drug-fueled super soldiers to create llama-human hybrids. Some very important different type of card spiracy headlines you're going to see in this game. There are a ton of cards in each of the three different categories and they can all be mixed and interchanged with each other to create headlines. All of these headlines are, uh, or can be, I suppose, a little more adult theme, but a little more adult humored and do have some more spicy topics that you may or may not see in a average teen game. So I would rate this game to be a little bit more on the average, like um, angsty teenager to adult side of what you're going to be playing board games. And I would not probably play this with the kids. And if you do, make sure you take out certain cards that are going to prove to be a little less family friendly. The game itself does have a Cards Against Humanity feel to it. And it also has the tactical tableau placement card management aspect as well. You're trying to maintain a headline. You're using your actions to keep from other people from stopping you from doing so and using those action cards to mess with your opponents and remove their headlines. If you can, you're going to try to place the most of the same type of card on the field as well as make sure that those cards attach to your character at the end of the game to score bonus points. What you don't want to do is play generic cards. However, there are certain characters that will change that. But in general, it's the principal rule.
scoring points as your headline is crafted at the end of the round is the most important thing. Gathering followers from everyone is another way of getting a lot of points, but you have to make sure that your headline is great, and that's hard to do when action cards are played. In general, like games like Cards Against Humanity and Apples to Apples and Crabs Against Humility or something like that, you're attempting to make the best, most funniest thing, and then people will just say, okay, here you go, that was funny, it's a good drinking style game. This one here has definitely got a lot more complexity, and it's definitely going to be a little bit more strategic as to how you play your cards and how you choose to play your headline lines. You might specifically choose to play poorer cards in attempts to get rid of players from giving you negative points, and that is a way in which you can save cards when play you think players are not going to have those actions to mess with you to play down and score those large points during certain rounds of the game. Utilizing your character and your cards to your benefit is definitely going to make a difference in this game and how you choose to play will also matter. It's not all about judging anymore. That is definitely an important aspect to the game, and it was a lot of fun on our live stream as well to where the audience actually got to vote as well, and whoever uh, voted the most for the specific person, we would give them five followers, it was kind of a nice little twist to the game, and to speak, this game does have quite a few variants that you can choose to play with, as well as an easier mode that removes certain cards to make it more of a fun style drinking game that you can play similar to Cards Against Humanity, while making that basic, basic journalistic or um, op piece writer or blogger or whatever. Uh, another thing to note in this game is the theme. The theme is all about making controversial headlines, and it does a very good job of that. In fact, this game actually hits the theme mark very well. What you're attempting to do, obviously, is to make your corporate overlords happy with creating a very specific type of headline, and also maintaining that headline while the news process goes until you go viral, whether it be through followers or just a nice headline, or of course just making those people happy. If you can do all three of those things, that's great. The headline doesn't matter, it just has to be thought-provoking and crazy, which if you've seen today's news, that's something that comes in the news quite a bit, and it's attempting to make people more nervous. It's like, you know, that's why people want to see car crashes and all that kind of stuff as opposed to a puppy being saved, you know? I mean, those feel-good stories are just slightly less. And then news stories that are just bland, people even care less about. So that's why you're trying to make controversial headlines. It's a psychological thing. It's what we humans just do. But the way it's implemented here and attached to how they function is super realistic and funny. Now, of course, these headlines are not realistic. They're just over the top and crazy, but that's the point of the game. You want them to be humorous and entertaining. You want people to vote for you. You want them to say, oh, I see what you did there, or oh, that's a little too close to home. Those, those kind of statements are going to be said throughout this game quite repeatedly, and that's part of the enjoyment of it. We all enjoyed this game quite a bit. This game hits home with the theme. It's very easy to understand and quick to play, and it has a lot more complexity than those basic judging games Games, allowing you to kind of make up your headlines and change others and change your own and utilize your character the best potential you can have, as well as throwing in some other odds and ends that you wouldn't actually see in a game like this. This is definitely one of those hybrid games that I haven't actually seen made before that's different than other games. Generally speaking, I like the game cult following when it comes to games like this, but this one here implements a bunch of other stuff hidden characters, as well as unique and different types of cards that you can implement together that form cohesive stories based on the type of topic that you're utilizing. If you like games like those judging games and you also like tableau ma management manipulation as well as actions, take that kind of thing, this is definitely one of those games that you're going to enjoy that has a bit of a story aspect to it. To see like a game of telephone what one statement is going to look like at the beginning of the news cycle and then how it changes over a period of time and how happy it, happy your corporate overlords are and your followers are as to seeing what it changed into. Overall, a solid little game that I quite enjoyed and everyone at the table had a good time as well. In fact, one of the people I remember saying something like, this game was so good. I always rather play this game than one of those basic style card games. That's, that's a quote for you. But yes, we liked Cardspiracy. I didn't mention any negatives, but that's mainly because people who typically see these type of games will know if it's for them or not. If you don't like judging style games or tableau management or take that or any combination thereof, it's not for you. And if you're a little against controversial headlines or a little bit of crazy antics, this will also not be for you. But it's going to be on your personal level of choice more than the quality or the design of the game. The way the game is made is just perfectly fine and has tons of combinations of variables, but I thought I would mention that. Regardless, 
check out unfilteredgamer.com. Our new blog posts are up as well as our giveaways on the site and you'll be able to see all of our artists as well. And if you have any questions or inquiries, you can go ahead and go there. We're doing a lot of great content and it's fully updated. Also check out our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. And in fact, this one was played on our live stream. And if you want to see that, you can check it out for yourself. If you need more convincing or to determine if it's something you want to do to jump over that, that little edge of the bridge or whatever terrible analogy regardless though thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to making sure you subscribe push the bell button notifications and like this video and then comment and let me know what you think about it